one of the visible uh, representations of big data has in the past year really uh, jumped to the forefront, and that's Hadoop. Um, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into what Hadoop is, um, what the structures are, and how this thing is, is set up um, to give everybody kind of a level set of what Hadoop is. Um, and we'll also be walking through some different scenarios on how you can leverage Hadoop using the Microsoft solutions um, and, and really help to, to bring this data together, both your structured and your unstructured data. By and large, when we're talking about big data, we're, we're talking about, you know, data that's it could be structured, but in many cases, in many, many cases, it is unstructured or semi-structured. In many cases, it's unstructured. We're talking about things like web logs. We're talking about things like uh, the, the signal data that's coming from uh, uh, machines or from plants or from um, your energy sensors or other sensors. Um, these are those new types of data that are really creating this deluge of data that um, you know, nobody actually wants to let go of. Um, that's, uh, that's one of the interesting facets of this, you know, that people are kind of holding on to this data and making decisions that, you know, it's really costing them very little to hold on to it, and they may want to reason over it in, in the near future. Um, some interesting statistics, just to kind of, you know, throw some, some numbers around what this means. Twitter, for example, they generate, um, as of last, uh, the, the last report I saw, which I think was last June or July, they were generating 12 terabytes of data a day. So all of you that are out there tweeting right now, you're just adding to <laughs> this multiple terabytes per day. And uh, as, as you may have heard, this is all going to the Library of Congress. So at some point, Library of Congress is going to have to figure out what they're going to do, and they're probably reasoning over that idea right now. Um, from, from the Bing perspective, you know, we've got Bing, and they ingest seven petabytes per month. So they're bringing in tons of data and, and, and leveraging their, their, um, their um, infrastructures to, to um, help bring the information back to our, our users. Um, from a scientific community, the, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, that actually generates 40 terabytes per second. So that's a lot of, of information that's being collected. And, and at some point, you, you really have to think about, you know, what, how am I going to store and manage this data so that I can actually leverage it in, in a scalable format? Uh, so as I mentioned, there's multiple facets to what big data is and what it means. And um, by and large, people talk about either the three Vs or the four Vs. The 4B is the one that, you know, it depends on who you talk to, if they're the purists that say, no, no, it's only the 3Bs. But volume is the first one, and that's the easiest to, to understand, that we've got big data because we've got a lot of data. You know, we've got petabytes of data, we've got hundreds of terabytes of data, we've got a lot of information, a lot of data that's, that's being stored. One of the other facets is, is the velocity of the data. And this is where things like, you know, as we start talking about Stream Insight as an example, is one of those technologies um, that helps address some of the, the um, velocity uh, facets of big data. That's where data is coming in so fast, and you need to be able to process that data real time or very, very near real time with very low latency. Um, that actually is a big data, uh, uh, it's a big data opportunity, we'll say, uh, not a problem, it's an opportunity um, as well. Variety absolutely comes into play where we've got many different formats. We've got data that's being uh, uh, stored in structured formats within our SQL Server worlds or other database management systems. Um, we may have that data that's sitting in unstructured formats as well, and it might be coming in through XML, it might be coming in through text, file or text files or other log files or uh, systems like that. Um, but all of this has to be consumed and consumed in a way that um, uh, can, can add uh, information back or give information back to our users. The fourth V is the one that I think is the most interesting, um, but, but is the one that's, you know, like I said, it's, it's the new kid on the block. That's variability. Um, some people go, well, isn't that the same as variety? And, and variability is best characterized by um, a, an example. And uh, the example that I had uh, read about um, was the, the Watson, IBM Watson, um, who competed at, on Jeopardy. It's the computer that competed against the champions on Jeopardy. Variability is, is characterized through Watson because Watson not only had to very quickly bring in those questions and interpret the questions and find the answer, but the words within the questions may have different interpretations 
given the, the words that precede it or the words that follow it. You know, it, the, the English language itself is very complex and the meaning of a specific word could change based on, you know, the, the other words that are surrounding it. So that's a, the best characterization of, of uh, variability. Um, and and the, the, um, a really great write-up of the four Vs, if you're looking to try and get a little bit more than a three-minute summary of this, I would recommend going down to that NoSQL's uh, mypopescu.com uh, post down below um, and look at the definition of big data. So what are some of those patterns that are emerging that we're, we're starting to see? And, and you know, we, we alluded to some of this earlier that people are holding on to information. They're, they're recognizing the fact that it's actually not that expensive to store the information, um, that they can hold on to, to data that uh, they're collecting from multiple systems and just throw it into something they're calling, that we're calling this digital shoebox. Um, it's, it's basically where, you know, I, I don't know what I want to do with this and I don't know if there's any value in this, but it doesn't cost me much to hold on to it. So I'm going to actually just kind of store this off in some very cheap solution, commodity solution off to the side, and, and I might do some analysis over it later. Now, recognizing that the analysis over something like that, um, given the, the nature of the data, you know, it's not necessarily going to be the, the split-second response time, but um, there, there's possibly, as I, I talk to people, I'm like, it's kind of like, there, there may be gold in those hills. So we want to, to hold on to the information to find out if there's any nuggets of, of real gold that we can use to um, move our company or, or move our decisions in the right direction. So that's where, you know, with the information production, you may mine through that digital issue box and try and look for insight and, and reason over all the data and help feed those downstream systems. You might actually use that digital shoebox to produce information out for other consumable feeds or um, enrich your, your existing I infrastructure. Another thing, and, and this is probably where there's a lot of value as well, it's, it's um, that you can provide some real analysis over the ambient data, over that digital shoebox data that can help you monitor and, and improve your systems, improve your, your um, ecosystem over time, your, your whatever data you're, you're storing. A, a very canonical example is web logs, for example, that people may store all these web logs off in this digital shoebox and being able to mine through that information and understand where there's perhaps some fraud or um, some, you know, uh, commonalities or patterns that you're seeing on how people are, are uh, uh, clicking through your, your websites or understanding how they might be leveraging the, your, your ecosystem, um, that's where you can try and optimize towards those behaviors.